Behind many great pints of craft beer, there's a supplier. Since the surge in popularity of independent and home brewers, Country Malt Group wants a small backyard business is growing into an industry giant. Now more than ever, they're coveting the company's original family-run mentality. And our challenge has been to keep that family look, touch, feel to it while we grow it and spread it out across the continent further. We have no desire to lose that family relationship with our customers as we grow. This is the end result. Adding a personal touch. Of the grain being milled. As well as applying just about everything for individualized brews. Malt, hops, syrups, and more. They're even providing products for other clientele, like craft wine and cheese makers. The major beer brands provide a product that is consumable, but let's face it, everybody likes grandma's cake far better than they like the cake from the generic bakery. And the home brewer provides a similar outcome. They are an artist, they are passionate about what they do, and they're also very early adopters of technology. Uh, as a group, they're kind of rebellious, and they don't like to conform to the big brewing standards. No, I'm doing it my way. In this region, they're very um, passionate about what they do. They adhere to their recipes as they would be putting it on a sheet. Uh, it's amazing what they do. So we're trying to adhere to um, meeting the needs of the brewers as, as well as the home brewers because there's most of them start as a home brewer and then uh, filter themselves into a brewery. Um, we used to have about 1,700 home brewers and several of them are now brewing within a craft brewing industry. Country Malt Group has two facilities in Champlain, literally minutes away from the Canadian border a warehouse mainly for mass storage, and another mostly for production, plus the storage of a lot of hops. Barley provides the body of a beer. Hops provides the nose, as they put it, and the additional flavor. The hops cooler is very critical for us. The hops has to be harvested, dried, and processed very rapidly from the field to the dry houses into the packaging system, where it's flush with nitrogen and vacuum or bubble packed, um, depending on which method is preferred by the clients. Um, hops is a container of a volatile oil, and that volatile oil, if exposed to oxygen and temperature, can degrade very quickly. Over a year, this facility does a fair portion of moving a couple million hops across the continent. But they also have distribution warehouses placed strategically across the U.S. and Canada. One of the mostly retired founders still remembers Country Malt's humble beginnings using a storage bin in his backyard. The idea behind it comes from my oldest son. Tom is uh, a home brewer and I had retired. Dad, you need something to do. That's, that was his idea. He, uh, he says we can get malt from, from Montreal and we can uh, try to sell it to the brewers. So the first thing I said was, where are they? There aren't any. And at that po point in time, there weren't. There weren't that many. So uh, we just talked about it for a year or two and finally we decided, let's, let's do it. Unbelievable what it, what it did. Uh, the first years, it would, it would grow 100% every year. It's, it's a remarkable thing. It went from here in Champlain all the way to the West Coast. Call it a little kept secret to their success, but they can't afford to lose sight of their original mentality that set them apart in an industry thriving on customized service. You get to know these people by name, by face, by product line, and you help them deliver that. That's your part of their recipe. And if you're not, they don't want to work with you for that reason, because then they're just one more number in the machine. And that's not what a craft brewer is about. He says that's the way regular beer giants have to operate to survive. Although Country Malt Group is now a giant in its own right, its flourishing roots in Clinton County have kept them grounded. And Country Malt Group's Managing Director, Brian Bayshard, is with us now. Welcome. Nice Thank to have you. you here. Thank you. You started this company with your father uh, nearly 20 years ago now. Yep, it was uh, around 1995, around this time of year in 1995. How did it all come about? I was out of college and my brother uh, was established in his career, uh, but he, he was a home brewer at that time, which there weren't very many. Uh, yeah, it was uh, relatively then, new relatively then, yeah. new. Yep, and he was having a hard time finding proper malt to, uh, 
to make beer out of. So he said, why don't you look into this? So, so we did. And at that point in, in life, it was, I was young enough where, you know, if it does something good, if it doesn't, oh, well. And as we got into it, it quickly looked like there's some good opportunity here. Um, ideally it's located in Champlain because of the port of Montreal and importing from Europe. Um, and then we started to look at it and started to evolve the model and certainly the market did what we needed it to do too. So, Your beginnings were rather humble. Oh, did you yeah. start in a tool we shed in your dad's in backyard? a little lawnmower shed behind my dad's house. I think we had six bags of malt, bought a computer at Sam's Club and uh, and a va least a van to deliver with and uh, no customers. So um, I think we touched every bag of malt uh, five times before we sold it because it was moving all over the place. Uh, so those were definitely humble beginnings, but that's what we needed to do to get bigger, create economies of scale and to develop the, the model into what it evolved into. From the tool shed you went to? We built our own facility. We put up I think it was 7,200 square feet. And, and then from there, we add, we kept getting bigger. We added a, another 10,000 feet or 8,000 feet to that building. And then recently, we took on 40,000 feet with the development corp. And in just the past couple of years, you have expanded more and you've yes. added more. You've added mm -hmm. uh, more than a million dollars uh, into yes. the company well, we, in, within the past year or two. We finally got out of the Stone Ages uh, as we evolved and uh, we automated our, a lot of our processes and it's helped us considerably uh, continue to evolve the business. Most of your malt comes from Canada. Most important. comes from Canada. We have, uh, uh, we have North American rights to several European brands. Mm -hmm. And then you also mill some of your own malt well, right, a, on site. That's a big, big deal. Yep, the milling um, allows us to get in at the smaller, smaller customers. So if we could start them there, they get, brand, they get loyal to our brands. So you customize, for, we your, customize for your customers. For the customer. So exactly. you must carry a large variety of, of we, uh, malt and hops. 150 plus different types of malt and then another 100 different types of hops. And as you grew, uh, it was back in the mid 2000s, so you have sold the company. Yep, we sold it in 2006 to um, a company called United Malt Holdings. And that company has since uh, sold it to Grain Corp of Australia, and then uh, I run uh, the country mall group throughout North America for uh, Grain Corp. So they retained you to run Absolutely. the company? Yep. What do you, uh, you have about 90 employees, is that across the country? Yeah, 90 to 100 in that neighborhood. And really the craft brewing industry is growing. I mean, leaps Absolutely. and bounds uh, it's almost growing every at, year. Uh, we've seen a contraction of the total beer in the, U in the U.S. or in North America but craft beer has gone up uh, considerably every year, 10, 13% by volume. They're about 7% still, uh, still small of the total uh, production or volume of beer produced in the U.S. So, so there's still room to go, but we're getting back to the number of breweries is at or about the same as it was pre-prohibition. Mm. Yeah. And for folks around here, they would probably recognize uh, Magic Hat, uh, uh, Saranac and Saranac, Utica. absolutely. Um, yep. Do you also uh, sell to some of the brew pubs who, who make their own? Yes, definitely. Those are, we try to be, have a good solution for the smallest brewer up to the Anheuser-Busch and the Miller uh, t t size brewers. Um, we also have a company that's part of uh, the country malt division called Brewcraft. They sell primarily to homebrew stores uh, who sell to the to home brewers. For your company though, you're looking again at another expansion within the next year or so. Yes. You've moved into the, into the new space uh, mm -hmm. in the industrial park, the uh, Development Corporation's industrial park in Champlain, but you're already looking at, at expanding. Yes, well we've been looking at adding another 100,000 feet to our location in Champlain. With the expansion in Champlain, would would there be more jobs with it? I would expect that, definitely. We've evolved from, you know, maybe five jobs in the seven or eight years ago to about 30 jobs in Champlain, 30, 35, um, in over a short period of time. What do you see for the next three to five years for the company? We see 
the market looks like it is going to continue to do what it does, and that's the. I mean, we can look at look back and go, "Wow, we did great things. Look at what we built." And well, we built it because of the market. We were we were lucky in that aspect. We saw what we predicted the market was going to do, and 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 it's exceeded those expectations. So we see it growing. Uh, low double digits again for the next uh, four to five years. More to come. More to come. Right. That's right. Brian Bashard, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Well, thank you.